Hello all and welcome to another tutorial. So um, this time I just wanted to run through um, a bunch of debugging windows in Visual Studio. Um, maybe you guys know about all of these uh, windows already but um, I want to just run through them to be sure that um, we all know how to get to these extremely useful windows. So um, the first thing is probably, uh, I should have gone through this a long time ago, but the Solution Explorer over here, I dock mine to the um, right hand side of the screen. Um, that feels really strange to me over the left, but um, I don't know, maybe you like that. So you can get the Solution Explorer open by clicking on uh, the Solution Explorer button just here, or you can go View and Solution Explorer, or Control Alt L, I've heard as well, will get the Solution Explorer open. That's obviously where you add um, files to your solution. Alright, but the debugging window. So I've made just a little program here. This will be used in um, the next tutorial, I think. That's why it's called Jumps Test Function. But um, this is just our standard um, C++ front end. And over here we've got our function. We've got nothing much in it, just Jumps Test Function. And then uh, a ret statement. Return. Okay, so these windows, you can only get these uh, windows open when you're in debug mode. And you can only also get them open when you're in um, expert mode. We're experts. Us assembly programmers. So we get to check expert settings, tools, settings, expert settings. Alrighty, so, um, well the first window that I want to go through is the watch window. Um, you've probably used this in C++ before, but uh, it's interesting to note that you can um, set watches on registers as well. So if we hit play, I've, I've set a breakpoint over there just by clicking on the uh, sidebar. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to open up a watch window. First of all, you can right click on uh, the register or variable and uh, select add watch from the context menu. There we go. So at the moment, AX has got 52428. What has he been doing? Anyway, uh, the other way that you can get the watch window open is um, debug, windows, and watch. You'll see that you've got four windows that you can open. Let's just stick to the first one for today, but um, yeah, you can open up four of them if you like. Um, okay, so when we step over this line, obviously AX gets 27. Something really good about this window is that um, it's showing the value of AX in um, decimal. You can change from decimal to hexadecimal. If you right click, you get into hexadecimal display in the context menu. We get um, 1B is hexadecimal. So um, that's really useful. If you want to know the value of a register in decimal, um, the registers window that I'm about to show you uh, is no good. It only shows it in uh, hexadecimal. So um, you can set a watch if you want to see that information. Okay, so that's the watch window. Let's hit stop. And the next window that we should go through is um, the memory window. So I'll just define a variable. My byte will call it a creative. I'll set it to um, I'll set it to ten. So uh, my byte in hexadecimal is going to be um, 0A somewhere. And um, to figure out where it is in memory, um, if we load the effective address into RCX of that value, my byte, we'll go through the data segment in a future tutorial, probably pretty soon. It's uh, really good fun. We'll go through the uh, load effective address command too later. But um, all it does is loads the um, address in memory of a variable into a register. So if we hit um, run, I've got a breakpoint there, and we step over that line, and then we right click and we say add watch on RAX. We don't need this one, but um, here we go. This is th that's the value of RAX there. That's the address of um, my byte in RAM. It's in box number five three six seven one seven three one two zero. But um, that's not much good to us the way that it is, because that's decimal. We really want uh, memory addresses in hexadecimal. So we'll right click and copy. Oh, sorry, I changed it to hexadecimal first of all. Then I right click and copy. Then we go up into um, debug, windows, and you'll see memory, three from the bottom. You've also got um, four memory windows. Let's just use the first one, shall we? Here we go. So. Um, over the side here is the address in memory. Um, get out of the way, you. These are going to be the hexadecimal values of each byte in memory. 
So um, this byte just here is the byte that's actually at 13FA81050 and this one is um, the one that's at 13FA81051. <laughs> okay, but um, we copied our memory location of um, my byte, so now we can paste it into this um, memory bar. Paste, and we hit enter, and there it is, right at the very top, as we would expect, 0A, which is um, hexadecimal for my byte. Hexadecimal for my byte. It's um, <laughs> hexadecimal for 10, sorry. There's no hexadecimal for my byte. Okay, that's the memory window. This is a really interesting window, actually, because um, you can actually load the um, code segment, if you like, and you can have a look at the machine code of your um, program while it's in memory. You can have a look at anything in memory, actually. It's very, very cool. But um, we'll get back to that later. Plus, there's an easier way to see the machine code of your program that we're about to go through. But before we do, we should have a look at um, the registers window. So, mov rex27, we might do mov um, rbx19, and add rax rbx. Just a little bit of fun for the CPU to do while we look at the registers window. Um, okay, so once again, hit F5. You can't get the registers window open unless you're running. And it's in debug, windows, and registers. There it is. You'll probably see me using this over and over again. You might have used it yourself. But um, by default, I think it just shows the um, CPU registers, which is our RAX, RBX, RCX, RDX, etc., 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 all the way down to um, R15, then uh, a couple of pointers. If you right-click, you'll see a context menu come up, and you can select to show any registers that your CPU is capable of showing. So um, I have an AMD Phenom 2. Um, these are the options that I've got. It's got um, segment pointers, that's our CS, etc, etc. Uh, data segment on that. Um, the floating point, x87. Yeah, we'll get into that sometime soon. That's good stuff. Um, yep, that's the floating points registers. We've got MMX registers. I've got MMX installed. You'll probably have MMX installed as well. Uh, SSE, SSE2. Those are really interesting, but we'll get to that down the track. Um, I should have um, 3D now. This this CPU is capable of 3D now, but it must be in 64-bit um, mode. They've disabled 3D now, so um, I can't check that. But uh, maybe you've got 3D now installed. Uh, AVX, that's the um, new extension from Intel, and uh, the AMD Bulldozer is going to have that as well. Very very exciting stuff. Those AVX, but um, this old CPU doesn't have them. And the flags register. This is extremely important register as well, which um, we'll look at in uh, the next tutorial, I hope. Alrighty, but most of the time we just have um, the normal registers open, or whichever registers we're looking at. So as we step through the um, three lines I've written just here, we'll see the changes happen in uh, RAX and RBX. There we go. 2E. 2 times 16 plus E, whatever that is. 46 or something. Yeah, so that's the registers window. That's very, very useful. Um, do note though that, um, yeah, as I was saying, you can't, it's all hexadecimal. Um, you can't display the registers in um, decimal. So if you need to see it in decimal, use a watch. Okay. And the final window that I want to go through is um, the disassembly of our program. So if we hit F5 to run again, and we close the registers window down, we're not looking at that anymore. Um, we go into debug once again, windows and disassembly. Um, let's just hide all of this. Um, I'm not, you can, you can um, show and hide the viewing options up the top here. I'm not sure what it comes up with by default, but um, that's a disassembly of our, of the code that we wrote. So, mov rax27 becomes mov rax 1b. Yeah, fair enough. 1b is obviously 27 in hex. Okay, some of the other things that we can show is... Um, well, let's just turn all of these on and we'll go through what they are. Um, in black you see your code, the code that we wrote. Um, beside that you see line numbers. 
that's uh, line numbers corresponding to your source code obviously um, but in grey here we see the um, disassembly of each line so this first number here is the address in RAM of the line in machine code you know to run a program it loads the executional file into RAM and that's where it actually loaded it to so if we uh, right click, actually no you can't right click if we select it and we just go uh, control C for copy then we go up into debug and windows memory and memory 1 um, we can open up a memory window just paste the address that we just copied and there it is 48C7C0 that's the actual machine code of our running program uh, loaded in RAM doesn't look like much over here in the ASCII bit but um, yeah that's the machine code of course computers can't even understand assembly they only read numbers so uh, it's the machine code and um, beside that address you'll see something that looks vaguely familiar this is actually the machine code as well it puts it here beside the address for you as well so you don't have to open up a memory window 48C7 whatever 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 and beside that it has the um, disassembled version of the line so um, the computer feels more comfortable using hexadecimal I didn't want to type 1 BH I'd just rather type 27 okay anyway that's the um, disassembly window as well and I think that's all of the windows that I wanted to go through so um yeah, I hope that was interesting for people. We're going to use those windows over and over and over again, so um, yeah, it's just good to make sure that everybody knows how to get them. And uh, thank you for listening.